Hello everybody and welcome to Friday's science session. So we have been building up to this science session all week by collecting our science questionnaires. So today we're going to be carrying out a bit of a scientific investigation. It's going to be a bit different to the normal investigations we would usually do because we obviously want to do it from home. Um, but we can still do it. We've adapted it to fit our needs. So first of all, I want you to think about what does every investigation need to have? I want you to do a quick note take, mind map, what things do you usually have in a science investigation? Okay, so pause the video and then come back when you're ready. Okay, so you might have come up with some of these things. So you need, first of all, you need a question that you're investigating. Um, you need a way of collecting your results. <clears throat> and so, for example, in our um, science investigation this week, our way of collecting results was by a questionnaire because that meant that everybody can get involved, whether they were at home or at school. So you need a question, a thing that you are investigating. And I haven't told you what the question is yet. A way of collecting results. So um, we did a questionnaire. Uh, but you might, if you were in school or doing one at home, you might um, survey people. You might go and ask people. You might have loads of people together in a group and, and measure different things. Uh, you need a prediction. So what do you predict is going to be the trend or the outcome before you look into the results? A way to present your results. So it might be like a table, a graph, um, a pie chart, some way that you can put all your results together rather than just having random numbers put everywhere. A way that you can present your results to somebody looking at your investigation so that they can clearly see what your results show and you also need variables so the things you're going to look at the things you're going to change okay so hopefully you came up with some of those um, and we're going to include all of those things um, in our investigation today so our investigation today is going to follow on from our inheritance session that we did yesterday and we are going to be looking at inherited traits but also how different we all look from each other. So I want you to think about this question that's on the screen. What if all humans look the same? So what if everybody was the same gender? What if everybody had the same color hair? They were the same height. They were the same weight. They had the same eye color. What if they looked all the same? Now I want you to think about the pros and the cons. So the good things that would um, happen if everybody was identical and looked the same, they had the same blood type, um, they just were sort of like clones of each other, so they were exactly the same in every type of way. And what would the cons be? So what would the bad thing be about everybody looking the same? There are some questions for you to think about. So how would we identify one another if we all look the same? How would we know who was who? And there's a lot of, if you've been watching the David Attenborough uh, programmes we've been putting on on a Friday, or if you've watched some of them before, um, he talks quite a lot about how animals identify each other, because obviously animals all look very similar to each other. But how would we identify each other? Um, what would happen if we were all the same size? Would that cause problems? Would that um, be a good thing? What if we weren't interested in technology or science? So what if we were all the same, but the same person that we were wasn't really interested in science? What would happen to the world then? Would we be able to create new things and advance? And if all of them were the same, would humans become extinct? What would kill them off? Because if something affects one of us, if we are all identical, it would affect um, everybody else because we would have the same makeup, the same cells um, inside. So what I want you to do is just pause and have a think about those things. Maybe list in your head or on your piece of paper, what would the positives and the negatives be if we all looked exactly the same? Okay, so we're gonna use that to sort of lead into our investigation. So our investigation, the question we are looking at is how much variation is there in the way that we look? And variation is how much difference there is. Okay, which is why in the science questionnaire, there was a lot of seemingly random questions um, to ask you because we are looking about the variety in our year six classes okay um, so we're not looking at varieties of ages we're keeping the ages the same we're looking at year six 
Um, so how much variety is there in our feature? So how many different eye colours are there in our two classes together? How many hair colours um, are there? Um, so how many different features do we have? Are there a lot of people that have freckles or do not a lot of people have freckles in year six or in our year six? Okay, so the really important thing to think about is that we are just looking at a small amount of data that has come from both of our year six classes. Okay, the, your results do not mean that if we find nobody in our year six classes have freckles, that does not mean that nobody in the entire world um, has doesn't have freckles um, when they're 10, 11 years old, okay? So we're looking at a small amount of data, but we can still gather things from that. So we can still think maybe a lot of people, a phenomenal amount of people have blue eyes in, in year six. And maybe that suggests that blue eyes is a stronger color or a more common color. And we, that's the sort of things we're gonna look at, okay? Now, what do you need to decide? Because everybody's is gonna be slightly different is what feature you are going to do your investigation on. Now, it has to be one of the things that was asked in the questionnaire because then you've got your data already and you just need to look at the results. So you might decide to look at hair color, eye color. We had things like shoe size in there, height. We had the length of our hand. We had hair type. Uh, we had freckles. And we had lots of different things. So what I want you to do is think about the questionnaire and I want you to think of the one thing that you're going to look at because if you looked at everything, you just wouldn't get a clear result. So you need to decide if your investigation today is going to be looking at all the results for eye colour, for example, and looking at how many different variations of eye colour there is, which eye colour is the more, most common, which is the least common. Um, are there any eye colours that, that nobody has? So maybe nobody's got green eyes, for example. But you need to decide and you can decide any of those things from those questions. Then you need to think about how you're going to record your results. OK, so we recorded our results in questionnaires, but you need to then you're going to go through all the data and you're going to collect um, how many. So say you're thinking about how the different eye colours, you're going to have uh, brown eyes, blue eyes, green eyes, and then you might have other. So people that have got mixed colour eyes. And then you're going to go through all the data. So you're going to look at everyone's questionnaire and you're going to think, OK, um, um, this person's got blue eyes, so one for blue. This person's got green and you're going to tally up or make a note so that at the end you've got a specific number and you need to decide how you're going to present that. So you're not presenting your notes of going through and just ticking off how many people have that colour eye, you're going to present it in a different way to us. OK, and how are we going to make sure we're accurate? This is really easy because our data is accurate because we've all had time to measure and put it together. So you're not measuring the same um, this, the same thing on everybody else. So you're not the one measuring hands, whereas you might go a little bit wrong, but the data should be accurate. So I've just said this, so I'm just going to move on because I forgot that I put this in here. But you get the idea. This is what we looked at. So... What you're going to do is this, and it's very simple. Um, at the top of your page, you are going to put this heading of the question, the question that we're looking at. Then you're going to put a title, my prediction, and I've put the sentence stems there for you, so you just fill it in. So I am investigating the variation of eye colour in year six. So I'm looking at how many different eye colours we have. My prediction is that uh, blue eyes are going to be the most common because all my friends have blue eyes. Okay, so you get the idea. So what do you think is going to happen with that question you've picked and why? Then you're going to trawl through all the data that is up on the website, look at everybody's specific question that relates to your investigation and make a note of it somewhere on a scrap piece of paper in your book. Okay, so you're going to gather the results from everybody from year, uh, from 6W and from 6G. So you've got a lot of data. OK, so you're just going to if you're looking at eye colour, you're going to go through and you're going to make a note. Now, you don't need to make a note of people's names. So you don't need to know that Miss Garraway has got brown eyes. Um, but you do need to know what colour eyes people have got. OK, so you just tick in the eye colour. You don't need to associate anyone's names with anything. OK, the names are purely there. So, you know, or the initials. So, you know, who's you've used and who's you haven't. 
then you're going to decide how to do your results. Now I've put some examples up here. So you're going to have a look at all your notes that you've put together and you're going to gather them together in one big results uh, table or graph. Now I would say, depending on what question you pick, the easiest to do is going to be a table because you could just have uh, an amount of color. I You could have uh, blue, green, brown, and you could literally just have a tally table to show your results. So if you want an easy way to present them, go for a table. If you want to challenge yourself, um, you can go for a bar chart. So remember, you need something that uh, measures on the up axis and you need something to measure across, okay? So across, if I was gonna do eye color, I would have the different eye colors across. And then going up, I would have the number of children that have got that eye color. And then say for blue example, if 20 people have got blue, then I would draw a bar up to the 20 on the side to make blue 20, okay? Hopefully we've seen a bar chart. If you really, really, really want to challenge yourself, you could go for a pie chart, but that is difficult to get right. Um, if you're struggling with how to do these, either pop us an email or you can always Google how to draw a bar chart or a line graph. It's up to you. But like I say, if you're really stuck, go for a table. So then you're going to have a results heading with your results table or graph drawn underneath it to show what you came up with, what you gathered. And then you're just going to write a short conclusion with the heading conclusion where you're gonna write a few sentences about what you found out. So you're basically gonna to speak to me and tell me what you found out in your results. As if I can imagine I can't read your results table, you're going to explain it to me. So in my results, I found out that actually uh, everybody had brown eyes. Um, so my prediction was wrong because I thought everybody would have blue eyes, okay? Just as simple as that. So what you found out and whether your prediction at the very beginning was right. What's really important to make sure is that you make the prediction at the beginning without looking at the results. So just think, choose your question you're going to do, what you're investigating, so hair colour, eye colour, and think about what you think is going to happen. So if you're thinking about height, um, you might predict that um, there's going to be a wide range of heights. And that might be because you know that some children in our class, just by looking at them, are a lot taller than other children. Or it might be that, it might be more specific, the old prediction is that uh, the majority of children will be over a certain height because you know that generally um, ch the children in our class are similar to heights. So it, your, what you are investigating and what you are predicting is completely up to you. You can make it as complex or as easy as possible. Um, as as you want. So you can make it just how many people have got a different eye colour, or you could go more into depth um, with things like height and hand length and things like that, okay? You might want to look for patterns if you really want to push yourself. You might want to look at height and hand size, and you might be investiga investigating if there is a um, pattern. So the tallest people have the biggest hands. So that is something you could do. Um, but that will be trickier. So really, it's about your confidence with carrying this out because you're doing it independently at home. If you are really confident with what you're doing, you can make it trickier for yourself. If you're not so confident, then pick something easy that will be easy to pick out. It is completely up to you. We are practicing the skills of going through data and picking out patterns. So whether you make it harder for yourself or easier, it really won't matter because the skill is what you are doing in the investigation. So you're looking at the data and spotting patterns, okay? So don't worry if you want to make it easier for yourself or if you want to challenge yourself, okay? But please be sure to email us if you're stuck and send us your finished results because we'd really want to see what you find out. Do people have more blue eyes? Are people taller um, with bigger hands? Who knows, okay? So we really want to find out. So be sure to share with us what you find out when you do your investigation.